Whenever Hollywood depicts biblical plagues, you can trust the locusts will make an appearance. I hate those little things. Summer! The grasshopper-like insects have had a bad rep since the height of ancient Egypt, but it's well earned. This year, the most notorious species, desert locusts, set off a global panic stretching from Kenya to Pakistan, and most recently, Argentina. Swarms have devastated crops and pastures, threatening the food supplies in regions already reeling from the pandemic and food insecurity. They also made their way to several cities in the Middle East, India, and Pakistan. Whoa, look at the locusts. Unlike the flesh-eating locusts in the reaping, real desert locusts prefer crops, leaves, fruits, and even flowers and they can eat their two gram body weight each day. They live for up to five months, growing about as big as a paperclip. Desert locusts mostly lead solitary lives in what biologists call the solitary phase. But under the right conditions, like a lot of rainfall, they can grow in number and band together, marking their transition to the gregarious phase. That's when they become a threat to agriculture. Their color and body changes, and they also get faster. They join swarms with some 150 million locusts and travel up to 100 miles a day. During the day, they ride the wind and eat what they find. At night, they rest on trees. Swarms lay eggs while they're on the move, which only worsens the infestation. Because they move so quickly, getting rid of desert locusts is no small feat. Some of the proposals on how to deal with them have been a little out of the box, like yelling at the pests Act! to ward them off, or just eating them. They happen to be a good source of protein, but that's now being discouraged in areas with pesticides. So far, tracking and spraying swarms with pesticides has been the most common strategy recommended by the Food Agriculture Organization, the global lead in the battle against locusts. We need to have lots of people reporting the presence or absence of locusts because that gives us an accurate map. In the case of COVID, we saw that the only way in which we could respond to this problem was through accurate testing. And for locusts, it's surveillance on the ground. Kenya's Marsabit County is one of the areas hit hard by locust attacks. Residents like Fofe Lawrence have taken up scouting for locusts. Our life depends on animal alone, livestock alone. So. When I found these locusts, they, they are causing a huge havoc and uh, destruction. So I have to get in and fight. Lawrence uses the Plant Village app to geotag locusts, sharing information in real time with the National Locust Center, who decides what kind of locust control needs to be dispatched. But it still isn't easy, especially for remote communities with little access to phone service. There was no network in most part of this uh, county. The other one was insecurity. I cannot be able to cover most parts because of uh, uh, because there are a lot of bandits all, all in these areas. They so to call uh, tribal clutches in this county, and sometimes it makes my uh, job even uh, quite difficult. For many impacted countries, it had been decades since their last locust outbreak. In Kenya, the recent invasion is the worst the country has faced in 70 years. So why are there so many of them now? Climate change probably has something to do with it. Locusts need moist sand in which to lay their eggs. And the way in which moist sand gets into the desert is, is by having large amounts of rain dumped there. And, and, and that comes with cyclones. And cyclones are increasing in frequency as they come off the Indian Ocean because of the, the temperature of the water increasing leads to, to, to more cyclones. Moisture is exactly what locusts need to build up their populations. And then they move around. The Food Agriculture Organization forecasts swarms could migrate towards summer breeding areas in Sudan, Ethiopia, and Eritrea through August, increasing the risk of a food crisis. That's especially concerning for countries like Yemen and Somalia who are already struggling with humanitarian crises. With first-generation swarms forming along the Indo-Pakistan border, the battle against locusts is definitely not over.